video a default detection playlist, we will look into the detection of short circuits among pins that belong to different boundary scan chains. After watching this um, presentation, you will be able to explain the behavior of a short circuit involving pins that belong to different boundary scan chains and also how to detect it. We will take as an um, uh, example the case of X9, which is a short circuit addressing these uh, three pins. As you can see here, um, actually uh, the um, short circuit is located in this part here. So this uh, uh, non-boundary scan cluster is the one that we are already familiar with. Uh, as you can see in the diagram, this short circuit um, involves pins that belong to boundary scan chain number one, but the uh, test responses are captured at input pins that belong to boundary scan chain number two. So we have to be particularly careful in a case like this to uh, make sure that we uh, operate the two boundary scan chains in the appropriate sequence, that is to say we first set up the uh, fault detection conditions using boundary scan chain number one and then um, switch over to boundary scan chain number two to capture the test responses. Again we have to start by answering this question uh, what are the fault detection conditions for X9? Well, uh, in this case, um, the general uh, short circuit fault detection condition applies. That is to say, we have to drive opposite logic values to the pins. Uh, in this case, it might be that we just drive 0, 1, 0, or the opposite 1, 0, 1. Uh, the one in the middle, let's say, should be opposite to the... Uh, two on its left and right. Um, to do so we will have to set this device to external test mode so that we can use the uh, boundary scan cells to drive the required test vector. It doesn't really matter in, what, uh, in which um, operating mode we set this device. It could be set, say, to bypass or simple preload. But I may probably set it to preload, sample preload. And this device, it will be used to capture the uh, test responses. So uh, it would have to be set either to external test or to sample preload. Since we are not driving anything through its outputs, we will uh, just set it to sample preload, which is sufficient to capture the um, test responses. So uh, having um, thought about this, the uh, test program could be written as shown in this slide. We uh, will start with the uh, test access port number one. So we will start by selecting test access port number one and resetting it to make sure that we start from test logic reset. And once we have done so, we are in the uh, position to uh, scan through the instruction registers and send in 16 bits, which uh, comprise the two instructions for uh, these two devices. So, uh, 0, 0 sets this device to external test, and 0, 2 sets this device to sample preload. Uh, at the same time, this command will enable us to uh, check that the uh, boundary scan chain itself is operating properly. So this is our uh, usual integrity check stage. And we are checking that the uh, 8 one patterns that are captured into the instruction registers are shifted out as expected. If everything went well, 
with the integrity check, we will uh, be ready to send in the appropriate test vector. And uh, this test vector um, is sent to the first boundary scan device. So we actually have two devices in a row, meaning that we have 18 plus 1836 cells, but it is sufficient to shift in the first 18 cells since we are only addressing these pins. Now if you see here, uh, we are driving uh, 0000A. A is the hexadecimal for 1010 meaning that we are driving um, these uh, four interconnects to uh, 1010. We are actually driving a 1 to the uh, middle interconnection. And this is the fault detection condition that we have considered a while ago. Once the fault detection condition has been set, we are ready to move on and select test access port number two, reset it and again carry out the infrastructure test to check that we can shift through the uh, device in uh, the second boundary scan chain. We are actually setting it to um, sample preload as we have done with the second device of the first chain and again we expect 8.1 to be shifted out. Once this device has been set to sample preload, we are uh, now ready to uh, capture the test responses and shift them out. So we will need to shift something into this device, but that is just meant to push out the test response that is captured in these cells. Now, if uh, 1010 is driven to these four pins, we expect them to be captured here as well. So we expect 1010, that is to say hexadecimal A, to be captured here. And it doesn't really matter what is captured in the remaining 8 bits. So uh, the uh, remaining 8 bits, we are just say that it they could be zero but we don't really care about them because we are not comparing these bit positions so their uh, mask bits are just zero but we expect to find uh, the 1010 combination in this position so the mask word will have an F there um, if we execute this program using our uh, remote BSD workbench tool, you will see that uh, in case the short circuit is present, the fault will be flagged and the output response um, will uh, show evidence that something has gone wrong. If we look to the waveforms, we uh, will see that there is a difference and if we compare the faulty response, which is what we are looking at right now with the fault-free response, which is what I am showing now, you will see that there is uh, one that has been overridden to zero. Again, I have... Um, again, I ask you to uh, take as an exercise the explanation of why this uh, uh, it is in this specific position that the fault is detected and to conclude I leave you with this question would it be the same if we use it uh, 00005 instead of 0000A that is to say if instead of driving uh, 1010 we uh, drive 0101